everybody seems to have a good amount of energy today. Yeah. All right. That's good. We're going to harness it. Um, for a long time now, um, I've been kind of threatening to share, a <laughs> to share a practice with you that um, I do quite often. And uh, it's called Mind Fist. I'm going to talk about the practice and what I'd like to do. I'll just explain it and then we'll do it. Um, we'll kind of like take baby steps with it. And normally, so the practice is, you can do it seated or standing, okay? Depending upon where you're at, okay? But the practice, let me just push this back a little bit. The practice is about holding a posture for a long time. So in that way, it's kind of related to Hatha yoga. Um, but what we're doing is connecting again to the Dantians, okay? The lower Dantian, which is the is related to the earth, right? This huge magnetic rock that we're spinning on as it spins through the galaxy, right? And again, the, the same shape that the solar system makes as it spins through the galaxy is a double helix, right? Systems and patterns. So we hold a posture here and then we hold here and this is the human right? The middle Dantian. So that's associated with us, the human beings, um, also the precious jewels and <clears throat> with our heart and the energy of the heart extends outward about 12 feet around us, right? Which is one of the reasons we can always feel each other. You can feel somebody enter a room, you know, somebody's walking down the street and their energy is uh, perhaps not so kind. You can feel it right away even when they're like way down there. Okay. And this is really important is to, is to trust that, to trust how we read energy. Sometimes if we've experienced a lot of trauma, the, our reading mechanism can get a little off, right? So what we're doing is kind of retuning it. Does that make sense? Because it's really important for those of you that are familiar with like love and kindness practice, right? One of the, the phrases is, may I be safe? May you be safe, may we be safe, but some of us may not feel safe, even though we are safe, make sense? So through these practices, we're retuning and we're coming back to our kind of natural neuroception, which is open and vast, make sense? Um, you know, this morning I woke up and I had one of those moments where I, like you just remember everything you have to do, including epidemiology. Right. And any and all of your responsibilities. And I was like, holy shit. And then I just immediately started doing loving kindness. And that's that's the, the lullaby. Right. To come back to you. So we'll, we'll kind of come back to that as we're practicing. So it's here and then here. Yeah. And then here. Right. In which we practice photosynthesis. And then here. And then here in which we're really kind of, for me, it's almost like uh, you're just feeling all of the energy of the earth rise up into your hands. So I'd like to start with that practice and then we're gonna move into more form and we're gonna continue adding to the prenatal sequence, yeah? Um, let's just play around with it, okay? You can choose to do this seated or standing as I've said. When I do the practice, I set a timer for myself with my little meditation timer. And each one of these is four minutes and you can start building. You can also choose to do just one for 20 minutes. Okay. So let's do, I'm gonna stand. Um, when I had COVID, I did this practice quite often but I could only do it seated because I just was, I had no energy. And we'll start off with a quick little shake, right? To disorganize those patterns, those habituated patterns. See if everybody can see me. Coffee, <laughs> coffee with turmeric. 
All right, so yeah, we're all gonna start off with a shake. Um, Dylan, are you familiar with the shake? No. All right. So we'll start off if you want, if you choose to do the mind fist, the Yi Chuan practice seated, you can, but let's, we're all gonna start standing up. Okay. So I encourage you to find your mountain, okay? See if you can, feet are gonna be either together or hip width apart. I'm gonna go with hip with a part today. Okay, and many of us, and usually women, think that their hips are much wider than they are. They're not, right? So look down, check out what your feet are doing, and even them up, right? So increasing our proprioception, where our bodies are in space, helps us increase our neuroception. All right, the hands are gonna be in the Taiji Mudra, which means that the thumbs come together at the thumb webbing, the hands come together. That's it, Anna, yep. And they're right below, so here's my belly button. Mine are a couple of inches down. All right, and then let's do this. So, and a lot of what I'm sharing with you is kind of integrating with some yoga techniques. So I'm gonna press on the big toe of my right foot and then the edge of my foot so I'm kind of just starting to activate the spirals in my leg and then engage the quad and draw energy up, right? You may notice that that starts to move all the way up through the body. And then let's do that with the left foot. So press the big toe down and then the edge of the foot and then engage your quad, draw it up. And immediately what begins to happen is energy rises up through the central channel, okay? Broaden the collarbones, lift up the sternum, relax your butt. It's kind of a natural tendency, right? Is to clench the butt, but relax the butt. Hi, Mary. Starting off in mountain pose. Okay, and let your shoulders just kind of hang, let the upper arms hang as we inhale. And exhale. And then notice if you're overarching your lower back. So slightly tuck the pelvis, bringing again the awareness to the natural spirals moving up the legs, up the spine. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your awareness to what you hear. and kind of where you hear that in your body. And if your eyes are open, I encourage you to like, just soften your gaze. Okay, and now draw up on the pelvic floor, that's the earthly doors, so you wanna have that closed. The roof of the, the skull, the crown of the skull is open, that's the heavenly gate, and then slight press of the tongue against the roof of the mouth. Begin to connect with the spiritual needle. So the energy that's moving up through you from the earth and also down through you from the heavens. As we inhale. And exhale. Just bringing your awareness to what you hear, what you smell, perhaps what you taste. Put a slight grip in your toes. Notice how the arches will pop up. All right, so conscious connection to the elements, to your body. See if you can bring your awareness to the amount of space between the crown of your skull and the ceiling. Right, like begin to expand upwards and outwards. Okay, 
And then from here, inhale. Exhale, release the mudra. Notice how you're moving molecules of air, because you are. Step one foot to the right. That's it. Okay, and inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale into the sky. Inhale. Exhale again, reaching your fingertips up into the sky so you could taste sky with your fingers. And then maybe as you keep reaching, the heels come up off the ground. You are connecting heaven and earth through the human. And then slowly begin to bring your arms down about shoulder height, slight bend in the elbows, palms are up. Right, like you're cupping the sky. And then inhale, begin to bend down. And we're gonna exhale, jump up and release. Okay, and so this is the shake, right? What we're doing is disorganizing <laughs> all of these habituated patterns in our bodies, right? Sitting too long, maybe not moving enough, but also in our minds, all right? So I would suggest just kind of shaking around, relaxing the shoulder joints, elbows, wrists, Knees. <clears throat> and that's the sound that we use to move energy through our body. <clears throat> <clears throat> I putter my lips a lot, probably because I also clench my teeth at night, right? So that helps to release the muscles of the jaw. You can take the fingertips, gently tap on the skull, okay? Really find the fontanelle, find the opening. Might even be a different color for any of you that have synesthesia that I do. <laughs> tap on the skull, the crown of the skull, the sides of the skull. Run your fingers through your hair. Okay, what we're doing is disorganizing patterns, but also helping the lymph system, right? So I like to start by coming down the sides of the neck. And then coming up to the sinuses. So two fingers, forefinger and middle finger by the sides of the nose. You can run your thumbs into the top of the eye sockets, relaxing the eye muscles, helping them release. Take the heels of the hands and then press them into the eyes gently. Allow the head to come forward, supported by your hands. Kind of nice there. And then, and then just roll your eyes clockwise and counterclockwise about eight times. It's nice to give the eyes a rest, yeah? And then you may also notice that you're kind of draining some fluid down. So you can gently tug on, the, my cat's staring at me, I gotta let her in. <laughs> so itchy. And then you can just gently pull on the earlobes. Again, right, moving fluid. Opening these station tubes. You can even press on the, take the heels of the hands and cup the ears and press in and pull away. Right. And you may find that the more you practice, you know, your body is attuned and you can be like, oh yeah, 
I really need to do this right now. Clearing the chest. You may notice the difference between right and left lung. First musical instruments the human body. Back to the legs. Side joint. Hmm. The, let's attend to our kidneys. So take the hands together. We're going to rub them together. All right. So the heat of the heart is in the palms. And we're going to help our, our adrenal glands here. Take the hands. Inhale. Bring them to your kidneys. Lift the chest, exhale into your palms. Mm -hmm. And again, you may even notice one kidney feels different than the other. Maybe it's even a different color or tone. Interesting, I'll do that one more time. Right. So I encourage you even to like draw energy up from the earth into your body, feed your heart. Inhale, hands to the kidneys, exhale. <laughs> right. And that's a different sound that we use too, especially for the kidneys. <laughs> Okay, and then come into the arm. Uh, <laughs> a little shoulder opening here. Okay, and again, connect to that spiral, right? So if my feet are planted, I can't really twist so much. And that may work for you. But if I pick up my heels, I can rotate more and I feel that kind of spiraling up through the crown of the skull again. <clears throat> and then hips. My right one is funky. So I encourage you, if possible, shift your weight to one foot and go slowly, slowly. All right, so notice where the head of the femur, the acetabulum, maybe gets a little stuck. Okay, and you can really think about what we're doing is lubricating that joint. And then maybe do the other one. And go both directions. Okay, and then to the hips are, all of these are gates in the body, all of the joints. And the hip is a major gateway in the body. And you may notice that we tend to carry a lot of stuff there, All right? So helping move through this, keeping energy flowing. And what I mean that we keep a lot of stuff there sometimes, like any pain, trauma, grief, allow it to move through you. And then we'll just kind of <clears throat> fan the heart a little bit, releasing the wrists. OK, 
Okay, if you're experiencing a lot of anxiety, maybe don't do this so much, maybe just gentle. Or, you know, notice as you do that, you're pushing and pulling. Can we push and pull with consciousness? So that there's some merit in the action, yeah? And then my favorite, releasing the muscles of the tongue, which are connected to the heart and the chest. <laughs> which just always cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's freestyle for the next few minutes, okay? Right? Attend to your bodies. Right? We're disorganizing and we're going to reorganize through form, conscious form. And I encourage you to remember that anything that you might be experiencing is simply information. And to have compassion for your own experience. like this part because I feel like a little kid. All right. And then you can begin to slow it down a little bit. Put your hair back up. And then five. Oh, my neck is making a lot of noise. Four, three, two, one, just stop. Drop your gaze inward. Look within. That's not my line, that's Master Wu's line. See if you can identify where things may feel or look open, or maybe there's not so much information arising. All right, just notice. And then inhale, step the right foot back to the left. Okay, the fingertips are going to face each other and the palms face the earth. And what we'll do is slowly bring the hands down, smoothing the subtle body meridians, right? It kind of might feel, for me, it's like playing a harp. And then, hmm. And then from here, we'll go into Yichuan, Manifest, okay? We'll do a smaller version of it. Um, so release the mudra and step out. And let me tilt this up a little bit. Or move you back. I always feel like I'm physically moving you guys back. I'm like, sorry. All right, so step out into a horse stance. <clears throat> so depending upon whatever you got going on, right? And if you want to do this seated, please do. Again, both practices equally valid. The horse stance can be super deep, right? Or a little bit more shallow. Feet are parallel, ideally, depending upon the shape of your hip joint. If you need to turn the toes out a little bit, go for that. You wanna make sure that you're not overarching your lower back, slightly tuck, lift up, engage your core. 
right? For any of you that have sat on a horse, you know that if you're sitting low on them, they don't like it. I'm tucking my pants in here. <clears throat> so we'll start off. This is what we call the nourished position. Okay, what we're gonna do here is turn the palms up. Okay, and I encourage you even just to notice. So come back to nourish and then turn the palms up and notice where that movement migrates into the rest of your body. And we're gonna hold this for about three minutes, okay? So earthly doors are closed, heavenly gate is open. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your awareness to your right palm and your left. Inhaling. And exhaling. And I encourage you to use a boxed breath with this. So you would inhale for, let's say, three, two, one. Gently hold it. And then exhale, three, two, one. And perhaps we can increase that a little bit. So. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Gently hold it. Four, three, two, one. And exhale, four, three, two, one. And I'll count the breaths out one more time. So deep inhale, four, three, two, one. Gently hold it. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. And then inhale, bring your hands up right to the middle dantian. This is sometimes known as bear. So my fingers are right in front of my sternum. And you wanna try and not have your elbows out too much, right? So that the shoulder blades aren't winging out. You ideally want the ribs to be the platform for your shoulder blade to rest on, okay? So you can imagine that if you were holding this for 20 minutes, you really want that solid foundation. And I encourage you here, we're gonna play with this. So as you inhale, maybe the arms press out a little bit. Gently hold it. And then exhale, they come in a little. And again. Inhaling. And exhale. Okay. So I would like for you to come to your own breath pattern, right? We all have different lung capacities, but we're gonna be here for a couple minutes, okay? The important thing, or there's many, but see if you can just notice the amount of movement in the stillness.
And if you feel comfortable, I encourage you to close your eyes or soften your gaze. See if you can connect to the energy of your heart, filling the room. And we've kind of talked about this before, but I like to use mantra. Right, every time that my heart beats outward, perhaps along with it are the words in liberating myself, may I benefit all beings. Okay, now, I feel like I could be here for a long time, but I want to go through the whole sequence. So inhale. Now bring the arms up. So the hands are kind of right above the crown of the skull. And you can imagine that shining down into you from your own hands are wisdom and compassion. But notice where this comes from as well. Your outer teachers, perhaps you can bring them to mind. If at any point you need, if you feel the need to bring your arms down, see if you can sit with it for a bit more, but if not, and that's all right, bring them down and then bring them back up. What we're doing is also building our tendon strength, which is very necessary. And then from here, inhale, and simply turn the palms up. That's it, Victor, you got it. Okay, and again, practice photosynthesis. Catch all of the light, turn it into fuel for your body, your mind, your heart. See if you can literally feel this pouring into your palms, into the wrists, the right wrist and the left, flowing down your forearms and your elbows and your shoulders. Inhale. And exhaling. You may even consider that the light pouring into you, if you have any injuries, it can go right there.
but also allow this light to feed your heart and notice how that spreads outward. And then from here, inhale, bring the arms down again. So we're back at the middle down chant, but the arms press out. Let's be here for six breaths. So inhale, gently hold it, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Sometimes it's good to have a goal, yeah? So we got three more breaths. But remember, you can make this really dynamic, dynamic and like press out. Notice as you do, crown of the skull may rise. Two more, inhale. Exhale, use your breath to dispel any stagnant energy. One more, inhale. And exhale. Nice. And then inhale. Hands come down again to the lower down chant. Check out your horse stance. I got sweat dripping down my face. Okay. And allow the energy of the earth to rise up into your hands. Notice what color it is. Feel it feeding you, sustaining you. Four breaths, inhale. And exhale. Two more. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Then inhale, step the right foot back, right, coming down and closing that practice. Hmm. Pause and notice. I'm going to come back to the center of the screen. So we'll talk about that practice at the end of class, okay? I do find it quite profound. You may notice after this, or just kind of notice what you notice, but it is um, whenever I do that practice, my energy kind of skyrockets. All right, so from here, from our mountain, we're gonna go back into the first element in the prenatal series. So inhale, exhale. You may also notice that you've cultivated, cultivated a lot of energy in your palms. So we're gonna play with that. Inhale, draw the arms around. So the hands come together at the midline. You might feel a lot of heat in your palms. So now we're going to come down. Right to the heart. Inhale, turn the left fingers down. Right hand comes up, left hand slides down. The left hand turns to the earth. The right hand turns to the heavens. That's it, nice Anna, good. Pause there, feel the energy falling into your hands. 
and pressing up into your hands. And then inhale. Rotate. Nice, Mary. Okay, so we're gonna match movement with breath. Again, this is like a boxed breath, so inhale. Exhale. And really go slowly, slowly notice the kind of eddies and wakes around you as you move. But still being aware of your feet on the earth, crown of the skull is open. Okay, earthly doors close. Inhaling. Exhale. And you can make this really dynamic press out. Press, 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 press. You can make it very kind of smooth and lyrical as though you were in water. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is I encourage you, what we're going to do is we're going to do this all together. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes. And I want like you to consider doing like, let's do four passes, okay? It's, sometimes our eyes can actually blind us. You can go at your own speed, moving with whichever element you wish, right? Moving through water or air. But it's important to play. All right, what if you had eyes in your hands? Because you do actually. Actually, do one more. Right, hands reading the air. Earth flowing into you. Heaven flowing down into you. All of the wisdom and the compassion of the past, present, and future Buddhas is all right here. And then inhale, bring the hands back together, but don't let them touch just yet. Feel all of the energy in your palms. Okay, and then what we're gonna do here, I'd like to do cloud hands with you guys. We haven't done it in a while. So from here, we're just gonna close that practice again, drawing the arms around. Hmm. Notice, look within. Inhale. Exhale, release. And we're gonna step out again to uh, another horse stance, just to play with cloud hands before we end, okay? Also, it's been raining like crazy out here. We got the storm moved over this way. 
So start with your hands in the nourish position. <laughs> okay, you guys can mirror me, meaning you do, this is my right hand, you guys can do your left hand or you can do your right hand, doesn't matter. All right, but I'm gonna turn my right hand up, come through the center line, see how my palm kind of faces me, and then around. Yep, so this is like a raindrop coming down to the earth and back up again. Okay. I remember when my sister died and I was writing her eulogy, I sat watching the rain fall into a puddle and I saw so clearly that our lives are as short and as brief as that. But infinitely connected to the all. Rising and falling. Yep. Inhaling. And exhaling. So again, you can make this, yeah, that's it, Mary. Really dynamic and start moving around. Right, let the movement move you. For any of you have, that have done martial arts before that you know that this is also touch hands. That's it. So I encourage you even just for a moment because we've been so still, see where the movement takes you. Yeah, let yourself go around the room. Right? Everything rising and falling, including our thoughts, our emotions. Watch them. Okay, you can even go backwards. <laughs> Right, cupping all of the energy around you, connecting to it, moving with it. Inhaling and exhaling. Sometimes we forget that we are, in fact, nature. But that our nature is Buddha nature. And then I encourage you even go slowly, slowly, slowly. Feel how air moves over and under and around you. And then you can go fast again. And then let's do two more, yeah? So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then just come back to nourish. And then let's step the foot feet back together again. Hmm.
Notice what thoughts arise, yeah? Remember that at any moment you can choose As Venerable Rubina says, and she got it from Lama Zuka, you can change your mind. Yeah, let's, I'll come and sit. That was a lot, we did a lot of practice, so I don't wanna throw too much on you guys. Wait, she took my meditation cushion. Sorry, Serge. <clears throat> How's everybody feel? <laughs> Part of noticing, yeah? So we moved a lot of energy. But truly, like notice what thoughts you're having. Let them come and go. And if they're perhaps not so productive, like, holy shit, <laughs> or, you know, I can't believe I did that, or I can't believe I'm such a dumbass. Notice it and turn it around and come back. This is why mantra is so helpful too, you know? In liberating myself, may I benefit all beings. That's so, so much of a better thing to say, <laughs> truly, right? <laughs> that keeps you on point too. Uh, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Probably. Gina. With, yeah. with the songs. Hold on, hold on, Danny. Go on, Anna. Sorry. I was just inquiring with the with the songs at some point. I felt like screaming. Yeah, do it. <laughs> That's like, I yeah. think I've got there's a lot of trauma, a lot of anxiety, but I think it's all held here. Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm glad you noticed it. Yeah. It's so much better to notice it and then be like, hmm, okay, now what do I do? Instead of not noticing it and then it's sabotaging you. Yeah. You know? Here and all there. Just yeah. Like do you, that's one of the reasons I really like when we're doing the, uh, the beginning practice where we drop our head back and just like, you know? <laughs> Also, I don't know about you, Anna, but what I like to do is I go out into the woods and I'm like, <laughs> I go see swimming as in, yeah, as in all sorts. Yeah. yeah, it's just energy. Danny. Oh, yeah. So that practice uh, is called Yi Chuan, the one where we just hold. Okay. It's a really powerful practice. I know that one because I've been doing it. I've been I just started doing it. I've been doing it for an entire month, up to forty minutes, and then hopefully more. But but you call it something else? My fist, iron fist. fist. My, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because it's not so much about the physical strength at all. It's also like this is one of the reasons I love doing wall sits, as Victor knows, right? A three minute wall sit I learned from being a kickboxer, right? Credible practice to develop your leg strength. It's not about your legs, it's about your head, you know? And what we what we notice is like, you start thinking about something, but the moment you, you start thinking about something, something else comes. And it's when we grasp onto the thought that the suffering arises. So if you can hold a posture and notice what's arising, and especially if you're there for 20 minutes, I mean, yes, your body will get very strong. That's also the benefit of doing prostrations, right? But as Venerable Robina would say, who the fuck cares unless you are of benefit to other people, right? So the benefit is training your mind and noticing. And, that, and we'll come back to that practice, Danny. It's super intense though. So that's why I wanted us just to like dip our toes into it, right? This is like, you don't throw somebody into an ocean of emptiness. You, you, you walk in gently. <laughs> um, but we'll come back to it for sure. And there's so many movements. And, but part of, I think part of uh, Qigong is also recognizing that 
you now have skills and tools, right? If I'm feeling some anxiety, I think the best practice is looking for the moon in the sea, like we did last week. Such a beautiful, calming practice, you know? Yeah, you got that energy going. I can see it, Anna. Yeah. That's ah, it's just what it is. It's energy, you know? Also notice, right, what we're doing is we're cultivating energy. We're harnessing energy. We're connecting to it. Your energy will rise. It will. So notice that, you know, and if it feels like a lot, either go and scream. I like to, I like to actually call it roaring, you know. Yeah, or go take a bath or, you know, or harness it. But I definitely, for sure, <clears throat> that's why I wanted us to do some more kind of yin practice at the end. If you guys notice that cloud hands is it's pretty yin, you know, and it's fun. It's also really important to have fun. I take myself way too fucking seriously. <laughs> Any other thoughts, you guys? Any thoughts on the breath pattern? I, I need to remember that like my lung capacity is most likely different. So it's important that when you're doing these practices that you harness your breath, right? And then start to utilize that skill. And also for Danny, I don't know if you're, if you're aware of this yet, but when you're doing each one, right? And you feel that energy gets kind of stuck, right? utilize like the ujjayi breath to move the energy okay and we only have it's you know unfortunately we only have an hour a week idea like when in the great before um you know practice is at least an hour and a half to two hours so we're do we did a lot today a lot, a lot, and I'm really excited. And I would like for all of you, let's end by this, okay? So allow your mind to settle on the most recent moment of kindness that you had for another creature, right? Could be an animal or a human or yourself. Like really see that moment, kind of replay it. Okay, you can recognize that that moment came from all of the moments before in which someone was kind to you, but also in which you habituated kindness. And it's beautiful. And you can take that moment literally and like wrap it with beautiful paper and tie it with a bow and offer it as a gift to all of life, but your future self as well. And I bow to each one of you. Thanks for practicing with me. It was fun. <laughs> if you have any questions, you guys know how to find me, yeah?